Uh, it's a very great honor and a very enjoyable experience for me to be here uh, this evening with you all. As a language evaluator, congratulations again on an outstanding meeting. At the beginning, I was I was very interested to hear from Kevin that uh, he is the 41st president of NTU Toastmasters, which makes the club older than some of the people in the room. Not not older than me, but older than some of the people in the room. That's that's really quite an accomplishment. And uh, every time that I come here, I continue to be impressed by the quality of the meeting and the quality of the speakers. Even some people that were not expecting to come up on the stage today were still uh, willing to come up and. and do a good job. So let's uh, let's have a round of applause for everyone who came up on the stage. So, as language evaluator, my responsibility is to listen to the way that language is used during the meeting and to make observations both about good usages and also some suggestions for improvement. So, our Toastmasters of the evening tonight also did a very excellent job. Thank you. Uh, very, very interesting. At the beginning, I do have one suggestion. At the beginning, when you were introducing the timer and the odd counter, it's it's sort of a tradition in this club that there's a skit, and then the skit involves the people participating in the skit having a need for a timer and an odd counter. You can you can add maybe one more sentence where you say, uh, "Oh, you're you're late for class. You, you need a timer to help you uh, keep track of the time so that you're not late." Let's welcome our timer. Or, You've said ah too many times. You need an ah counter in order to avoid saying ah so many times. Let's welcome our ah counter and, and so on, just to make that connection. The variety session was also very interesting. Uh, thank you to the person that hosted the variety session. I have a, a general suggestion about English grammar that I, that I heard during the introduction of the variety session that I want to bring up, and that is we saw, we saw a person on the screen that was uh, walking alone down Lonely Road. And I guess it was, let me get the name here, Rita said, perhaps he is a heart-breaking person. So there, there are a couple of verbs, or a handful of verbs in English that have become adjectives, end in ing, like boring, or annoying, or heartbreaking. And you can use them as adjectives to describe a person, but you have to be careful how you do it. If you say that a person is a heart-breaking person, that means that he has broken, not that his heart is broken, but that he has broken the hearts of other people. Okay. Similarly, so I, I was expecting, you said he was a heartbreaking person. I thought the story was going to be that he walked out and abandoned his family. And, uh, so, and, and similarly, we wouldn't say, uh, I, I'm very boring. I sometimes hear Taiwanese people say, I'm very boring in class. Okay. In fact, you are not boring. It is the professor that is boring. <laughs> I'm, I'm a professor, so I can say that. Uh, you are bored. Say, you don't say, I'm very annoying with my friend, you say, I'm very annoyed at my friend, and so on. Uh, spe speaking of professors, during, during the, uh, again, during the variety session, speech, speech uh, variety session, I, I noticed that in the stories here at NTU Toastmasters, professors are usually the bad guys. <laughs> they're, they're causing trouble for students by, uh, by being old or angry or crotchety or mean. Uh, Someday, someday I'd, I'd like to come to Toastmasters and hear a story about a professor who's, who's very polite and mild-mannered, but, <laughs> but gets some uh, superpowers and is able to save the day in some way. I'll, I'll, I'll keep coming. Maybe you guys can put together a story. Yeah. Ne next week. Next week? No, I, I won't be here next week. You can have a, you can have a semester for, uh, to prepare your, prepare your story. <laughs> OK, again during the variety session, I heard one person say that the space aliens were introducing Jack about the whole space. For the verb introducing, we would use the preposition to. Introduce Jack to space, to outer space, to the many different places in outer space. And in another story, I heard someone say, suddenly there comes a brown bear shouted at him. So we, we wouldn't say there comes. We could say suddenly a brown bear appeared, or suddenly a brown bear approached him. And we wouldn't usually say shouted. Later in the story, we discover that the brown bear can actually speak a language. I guess it, I guess it speaks English. Uh, so if you're speaking the language, you can shout. But a bear would ordinarily growl. Is, the growl is, is the noise that a bear makes. In the introduction to the prepared speeches, I heard 
uh, one of our Toastmasters of the evening say, she hasn't replied me. Uh, my, she, 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 was, she had a partner in her class presentation, but her class partner has not responded to her text message. She said, she hasn't replied me. Some verbs in English require a preposition to connect with the object. And unfortunately, I don't know of any rules. You just have to memorize which verbs require a preposition and which preposition it is. In this case, we would say, she hasn't replied to me. And later, Amanda gave a very interesting speech. I, I, I try to make, I, there we are. I try to make eye contact with the person, but I have to look all right. Uh, very, very interesting and indeed very humorous speech. I have, I have one suggest, well, I have, I have two comments. The first is you, you talk about perfectionist. In, in my mind, someone that's a perfectionist, there, there's no association with physical appearance. I consider myself to be a perfectionist, but certainly not because of the way that I look. A, a perfectionist is someone who has, in my mind at least, a perfectionist is someone who has very high standards for their own performance. Which, which, which you touched on, and you talked about how you're frustrated becoming coming in second and third place in your math class and so on. But I, I, don't, I don't associate perfectionism with physical appearance in any way. And later, you, later in your presentation, you said, add salt to injury. I, you're, you're kind of mixing up two idiomatic expressions in English. We can say, add insult to injury, or you can say, uh, rub salt in a wound, or add salt to a wound. But if you say, add salt to injury, that, that by itself is, is sort of mixing up to idiomatic expression. But again, generally a very good speech. Later, <coughs> let me see. Yes, during, during the break I heard, uh, or just before the break, there was a suggestion about filling in a questionnaire in order to have an opportunity to uh, win a prize, a 7-Eleven coupon. And the speaker said, if you, don't, uh, if you don't fill in the questionnaire, please fill it out right away. Instead of don't, we would say haven't. If you haven't, if you haven't yet, meaning, meaning that the action has not been completed yet, but, but should be completed immediately or in the, in the near future. And finally, in the introduction of the evaluators, again, we had a situation, we had a situation with a preposition and a verb. So the speaker said to evaluate for Amanda's speech. In that case, no preposition is required. You can just say, we say evaluate Amanda's speech. I wish, I wish that I had some, some rules or suggestions. I guess you just need to have a lot of experience in order to pick up on all of that. Okay, uh, so that's all the notes that I took. Once again, uh, an outstanding meeting. Looks like we've got a bunch of uh, new faces. Uh, meeting's very well organized. Congratulations to the leadership team. I'll just take a few seconds to say that if you are new to the club and you are considering joining, my personal strong suggestion is that you go ahead and do it. I've been involved with this Toastmasters club for maybe 20 years old. I might have been involved with it for 10 years. I'm, I'm not sure, nine or 10 years. And over the years, I've, I've continued to see how many, how much people have benefited from being a part of this club. The friendships that have evolved and the good times that have been had and, pictures for meetings and activities and the way that people have, have blossomed and grown from being perhaps shy and insecure to being very confident up on the stage. So uh, my, my personal plug, if you're considering joining this club, uh, it is a little bit expensive, but I, I really I do recommend it. So I'll go ahead and stop here and return control to our postmasters of the evening. Thank you all very much.